Ford's website. This is a test site um, where they put up you know, roads and they can drive this during the winter. Um, the green data, green bluish data here is all pre pre recorded, pre mapped, so the by the same type of sensor, so it's typically collected from car height. And we have a bird's eye view here of the data, but it wasn't collected um, at that height. And then this purple bluish data is the real time data overlaid on the uh, pre collected data. And so it's fairly easy. Um, well, easier to sort of register this real-time data um, with respect to the pre-collect data. And then here you see, for example, pedestrian crossing the street. So and then when the car sort of moves out of the range, you don't see that anymore. In this particular example, you can see here when the car stops, you see all those lines that I talked about earlier. And then when the car moves, you see that it fills in these gaps in between. So here, I don't know how many uh, frames the data has lagged, but obviously it shows here the last maybe 10, 20 frames to create this effect. And you know, this is a lot of data up to, you know, our sensors, you know, spit out somewhere between 300 to 1.2 million points per second. Um, so a lot of data, yet it's already all in 3D format basically uh, know where this data is. And then some people work on um, what's called self-location and mapping. You sort of stitch the data together and use features in the scene to help them stitch that data together. And also quite often they use inertial measurement units to figure out exactly the uh, position of the car is and its uh, orientation and so on. And that's how they 